Andy Grierson. I'm the postgraduate lead for the Department of Neuroscience at the University of Sheffield. Most PhD studentships in our faculty will be advertised on either the faculty web pages, departmental web pages, and most of the time on findaphd.com. I would look all around the year. Um, so although that sort of classically PhDs will be advertised sort of before Christmas time, there will also be opportunities throughout the year when people have got research grants that, that contain PhD studentships. For the majority of projects in the faculty will be on predefined uh, research topics um, that are led by the project supervisor. That's not to say that students don't have uh, intellectual input into projects as they develop over the three to four years of study. So most of the time, supervisor will receive uh, a number of applications and will then draw up a short list uh, of the students that they wish to, to interview for the PhD position. And then um, at the interview, typically students will be asked to give a, a short presentation about some research that they've done already. If you're asked to give a presentation uh, at interview, then think carefully about what to include. Um, you're trying to show your ability to be an independent researcher and, and also to give a clear presentation. And, and part of the process will be watching you give the presentation, but it'll also be uh, a chance for the, the interview panel to ask you questions about your research and see how you can handle questions. The reason that we'd ask for a presentation is part of doing a PhD is, is presenting your research. And increasingly, there's a lot of emphasis put on that. Uh, and nobody tends to like standing in front of a crowd and, and presenting, but if you're successful, then it's something that you have to do. In terms of referees, we would usually be looking for your personal tutor or your project tutor. So somebody who's actually can, can comment on your ability to, to do research in a laboratory setting. That's the most relevant reference that, that you could provide. So you need to spend some time um, preparing your CV uh, because that's ultimately what's going to be um, the means by which a shortlist is drawn up. Most of the time is just by looking at the CV. So make sure that you include the indicators of esteem and things that set you apart from, from other people that will be applying that you'll be in competition with. Um, you know, we want to see uh, sort of academic indicators, so things that you've done as part of your undergraduate or part of your master's, particularly if you've done any research projects at any stage, whether that be during vacations or in a year out or as part of the undergraduate. Those are the sorts of things that, that, that academic supervisors will be looking for because it's a good indication that you're suited to, to research and it's a way of um, determining that you're likely to be able to, to do a PhD. Getting onto a PhD is um, highly competitive uh, these days, so it's got to be something that you really are interested in doing um, and something that, you're, um, that you've got a sort of a long-term plan that, that means that getting a PhD is an essential part of, of what you want to do. Although you might feel slightly nervous, you, you should consider that you're going to spend the next three to four years working on the, the particular PhD project that you choose, and, and in particular with the supervisor that, that is offering the project. So it's a very good idea to, to seek them out and go and ask them any questions you've got and, and just work out whether this really is the project that you want to do.